Hey there, awesome physics students. We want to talk about the connection between displacement and velocity. And these, of course, are two important vector quantities. And if you understand the connection between the displacement and the velocity vectors, that makes understanding motion so much easier in the future. So let's get going. So let's start with a motion diagram. Imagine you throw a ball to a friend, a baseball or something like that, and you track the position of the ball as it flies through the air at different uh, one second intervals here. And so um, you've captured the motion, and so these remember these are equal time intervals. And to help us analyze this in terms of vectors, we're going to draw a, an origin here, an xy coordinate system. So I'm going to draw x and y like that. I'm putting the origin of the coordinate system at the point, or the first point. That's where we release it. And let's think about the uh, position vector for this point and this point in the air. So we're going to draw the position vector here. This is going to be R1. And it's traditional to use R for position vectors. Uh, R does not stand for radius. It stands, it's just a position vector. So don't interpret R as a radius of any kind. So that's the first position vector. And then the position vector for the second point is here. That's R2. And um, uh, what we want to do is we want to think about the displacement vector. So the displacement vector is the difference between these two, or the delta r. And so remember, the delta symbol tells us it's final minus initial. So the final point is here, and the initial point is here. That's going to be r2 is the final point, minus r1 is the initial point. And again, the, just because these are vectors, this definition still holds even though these are vectors. Okay. Uh, so we want to subtract these two. Um, we want to put these, use the tip to tail method to, to subtract these two. So we just start with R2 like that, and then we take R1 and we're going to flip it backwards and put it at the tail of R2. So let me just put that, get that about right here. And so that displacement vector, or that, excuse me, that, that negative r1 looks like that. And then, again, we start where we start, and we finish where we finish. So we started at here at this point, and then we finish here. And so our delta r, the displacement vector, points from the origin to this point here. Now, one thing you may notice is I'm allowed to, remember, I'm allowed to take these around. I can move this, and that is just like taking it in this direction here, too. So, so this is also delta r here. That begins at the point here and ends at the final point there. And an interesting thing to note is that that displacement vector, delta r, is going to be the same vector even if my coordinate system was completely different. So, for example, if I took my coordinate system and put it way down here, R1 is going to go way up like that, R2 is going to go way up like that, but the difference between those two points is still going to be where I started here to where I finished here. That's the displacement vector. So the displacement vector is independent of the coordinate system that you choose. I could put the coordinate system anywhere. The displacement vector is still going to go from this beginning point to this end point. Okay? And there's one more important connection. Okay, So that's the direction of the displacement vector. Um, oh, what's the connection between that and the velocity vector? Well, as this thing travels in this arc like this, the velocity vector is going to point in the direction it's going. And so the velocity vector actually goes in the same direction as the displacement vector. And remember, the reason that this is true is that the velocity vector is the displacement vector over the time interval. And so because the, the, the velocity vector gets its vectorness, its direction, from the displacement vector, these two are guaranteed to be in the same direction. Okay, so on these motion diagrams, we're going to drop the dis drawing the displacement. We're just going to draw the velocity vector uh, between these points here. Okay, so that's going to be the velocity vector. It's going to travel that, and it's going to be parallel to the displacement vector. Okay, so uh, this is really going to come in handy when we do more advanced motion diagrams.
and uh, it's very useful to understand the connection between displacement and the velocity vector. All right.